evening. Yeah. Welcome to the November 6th City Stillwater City Council meeting. I call the meeting to order. And we have some very special guests with us tonight. And I'm going to ask them to come up to the podium so they can see themselves on TV. So everybody come up here. And you're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So would everybody please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And while everybody else can return to their seats, the gentleman right up here, no, you have to stay up here because we have some business. So. You are Cub Scout Pack 3804, den number five. Five, thank you. And I would like to know your names and where you go to school. So one person talking to the microphone and move over and let. So you want to start? Yeah. Um, my name is Sam, and uh, I'm 10 years old, and um, I go to Sanger Ridge Elementary. Okay, and what grade are you in, Sam? I'm in fifth grade. Okay, next. Thank you, Sam. My name is Parker, and I'm 10, and I also go to Singer Ridge Elementary, and I'm fifth grade. Thank you, Parker. My name is Porter Matlock, and I go to Singer as well. I'm 10 years old, and I'm in fifth grade. Thank you, Porter. My name is Jack. I am 10 years old and I also go to Sanger and I'm in fifth grade. Thank you, Jack. My name is Jack. I go to Sanger. I'm 11 and I am in fifth grade. Thank you, Jack. My name is William Halley and I'm nine years old and I go to Sanger and um, I'm in fourth grade. Thank you, William. Okay, well, you're, you're not. Sit, stand back up. We're not done. <laughs> Counselors, do you have any questions for these fine young men? What's the, uh, what's the best part of being a Cub Scout? All the activities that we do. It's so fun. Good. I like the people. They're nice and friendly and stuff. Good. I like camping. Any other likes? <laughs> camping. <laughs> creating stuff <laughs> those are great answers it makes me want to be a cub scout too but i think i'm over the limit right way over, way over. <laughs> <laughs> this is why i love cub scouts you guys are awesome Mr. Dorman, isn't there some kind of city offense involved there? Or <laughs> Could I just get his name on something on the way out? My name's Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I appreciate you for your honesty. You're right. Way over. Yeah. Way over. Okay. Let's take a picture together, and uh, I think we have a parting gift for yeah. them. They have their parting gift, so I will come down there and we'll I would, take a picture. I would like to ask who oh. their leader is. Uh, our leader is Dalton Parsons and uh, Scott Matlock, which is not here right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we really Are you ready. The leader. the way over person. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Only kids. I think Sam should have to stay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I don't know how to even beat that, but I have some proclamations I want to read. And the first one is for... <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm... 
I was still a little shaken up by that <laughs> over comment. <clears throat> uh, the Extra Mile Foundation. Someone here? No? Okay. Okay, so the first proclamation is, whereas Stillwater is a community which acknowledges that a special vibrancy exists within the entire community when its individual citizens collectively go the extra mile in personal effort, volunteerism, and service, and whereas Stillwater is a community which encourages its citizens to maximize their personal contribution to the community by giving of themselves wholeheartedly and with total effort, commitment, and conviction to their individual ambitions, family, friends, and community. Whereas Stillwater is a community which chooses to shine a light on and celebrate individuals and organizations within its community who go the extra mile in order to make a difference and lift up fellow members of their community. And whereas Stillwater acknowledges the mission of the Extra Mile America Foundation to create 575 extra mile cities in America and is, so proud, and is proud to support Extra Mile Day. Now, therefore, I, Gina Noble, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim November 6, 2017 to be Extra Mile Day. And I urge each individual in the community to take time on this day to not only go the extra mile in your own life, but to also acknowledge those who are inspirational in their efforts and commitments to make their organizations, families, communities, countries, or world a better place. Thank you, Extra Mile Foundation. And now we have uh, the Stillwater Fire Department proclamation, and I'd like to call them to the front. Right now. Come on, come on up. Got a lot of good recognition. I don't want to stand here by myself, so you have to come up. <clears throat> okay, whereas the Stillwater Fire Department has always answered the calls for help from the citizens of our community in a selfless and heroic manner. And whereas the delivery of fire and medical services can put our firefighters in harm's way. And whereas on April 19, 1985, Tom Osting began his career as a firefighter with the Stillwater Fire Department. And whereas on July 1st, 2000, he was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant and served in that position for 11 years. And whereas on September 22nd, 2011, he was promoted to the rank of captain and has held that position for the last six years. And whereas fire captains are charged with the responsibility of protecting their assigned personnel and developing the firefighters into leaders of tomorrow. And whereas the role of fire captain is critical to safe and effective fire department operations and to be a successful fire cap captain requires individuals with exceptional leadership ability in various in very dangerous situations, and whereas acknowledging those individuals who have excelled in this position of fire captain and served as a positive role model upon their retirement is a distinctive honor. Now, therefore, I, Gina Noble, Mayor of the City of Stillwater, do hereby proclaim and acknowledge the 32 years of service that Fire Captain Tom, we please pronounce? Osting. Osting, okay, I just wanna make sure I say it right. Tom Osting has given our community. Captain Osting has faithfully and diligently carried out his duties in a manner that is a credit to the fire service and has protected our citizens and firefighters from harm. And I call upon the people of this great community to join me in congratulating Captain Osting in his distinguished career and wishing him a long and happy retirement. Well, it's truly been an honor uh, to be involved with the uh, city of Stillwater and the fire department. I moved down from Michigan in 1980 to go to the School of Fire Protection and wound up staying. And that's one of the things that happens when you marry an Okie girl, you wind up staying. So uh, we've been married 34 years and uh, she's put up with this schedule for a long time. And now I'm watching grandchildren, taking her mom to appointments and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So. Uh, I started keeping a run log when I first came on, uh, like my dad did. I'm a fourth generation firefighter and had responded over uh, 8,034 times in my career. So 
I've enjoyed it, and thank you very much. Thank you. Captain Osting's been a great asset to the city of Stillwater. Uh, 32 years ago, we were hired off the same hiring list when fire station number four was built at uh, 19th and Mansfield. Since that time, Tom has operated in many different leadership roles with the Stillwater Fire Department. Most importantly, Tom has acted as, a, as an advocate for labor on the labor side of the house. His uh, coolness under fire, if you will, and his mentorship, not only to myself, but the chiefs that have come before me has been greatly appreciated. For that, I say thank you. Okay, and I have one more thing that I want to read. Last Friday evening, the Stillwater Fire Department held a retirement and promotion celebration at the Stillwater Community Center. Retirements during the last year consist, consist of Captain Tom Oosting, who served 32 years, and Firefighter Hel Harold A. Puddin Payne, who retired after 24 years of service. We would also note that Firefighter Payne recently succumbed to a duty-related illness. We send our condolences to Puddin's family and many friends <coughs> to both retired firefighters. We appreciate your honor honorable service to the citizens of Stillwater. Both retired firefighters, we appreciate your honorable service to the citizens of Stillwater. We recognize your efforts to save lives and property of our citizens. Finally, I want to recognize the sacrifices made by your family during your years of service. Promoted during the reception were Lieutenant Thomas Tharp, promoted to Chief of Training, Lieutenant A.J. Westmeyer, promoted to Captain. Lieutenant Medical Officer Stephen Marshall promoted to Medical Officer. Firefighter 2 Joey McIntyre promoted to Lieutenant. Firefighter Todd Hinkle promoted to Lieutenant. And Firefighter 1 Dalton Everett promoted to Lieutenant Medical Officer. To those promoted, thank you for your hard work to reach your new positions. You have been recognized by the department for your knowledge and promoted to positions of trust. I appreciate your contribution to the Stillwater Fire Department in making it one of the premier fire agencies in the state. Also, there were some new employees um, announced during the reception, and that would be Colton Wilson, Ryan Clark, Garrett Sharber, and Travis Boyd. We welcome you to the department and wish you luck in your future. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. Do we need a picture? We do need a picture, right? Picture? If you would like a picture, certainly. Would they like a picture? They'd like a picture. <laughs> Never seen such shy, shy. <coughs> <laughs> okay, counselors. Does anyone wish to remove or clarify an item, or is there a motion to approve the consent docket? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, the consent docket is approved. 
That moves us to public hearings, and if you will notice on item A, it has, there's a staff memo to withdraw the application. No action required. No action required. Withdrawn, it's done. Okay. So we did have one public comment, but we notified the person. I just want to make sure the person, uh, Judy. Jody. Jody. Okay, she's not here. All right. That brings us to item B, public, uh, receive public comment regarding a request for a spe <coughs> specific use permit for an LED sign for property addressed at 2917 East 6th Avenue, CC-17-153. Mr. Dorman, did we have good notice on this? Yes, ma'am. Mr. McNichol. Thank you. And our newest member of Development Services staff will have that report. Yes, thank you. The specific use permit before you is located at 2917 East 6th Avenue. The hatched mark on the center of the map indicates the subject site, and it's currently zoned CG uh, Commercial General. Uh, to the east and to the west is also Commercial General. To the north is RTM, uh, residential, two-family, and multifamily. And to the south is RMH, uh, residential uh, manufactured home. And the primary re reason for the, um, the permit is because the, the subject site is adjacent to residential. This is a photo taken from uh, 6th Street looking to the south. You can see the, the church in the background and right here is a manhole. There's an existing utility easement that runs east and west from this manhole, and the sign will actually be located uh, directly to the south of this manhole uh, outside of the easement. And this is uh, an elevation of the, uh, the pole sign that's uh, proposed. You'll see the static sign is at the top. It's approximately six feet uh, by 10 feet. The LED sign is below, and it's approximately four feet, three inches by six feet, three inches. And the overall height of the sign is just under uh, 20 feet. Is there any questions? Counselors, any questions for staff? I do not. Okay. Um, at this time, I will open the public hearing, but we don't have any one signed up to speak, so I will close the public hearing and ask uh, for recommendations from staff. The Planning Commission made a recommendation of four to zero to approve the application. Okay. Councilors, any questions at this time? Is there a motion? Motion to accept the Planning Commission recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve a Planning Commission's recommendation on CC 17-153. Please vote. <coughs> With a vote of four to zero, CC-17-153 is approved. That brings us to general orders. <clears throat> Consider approval of a right-of-way agreement with Husband House LLC at 1124 and 1126 South Husband Street. This is CC-17-156. Mr. McNichol. Uh, Development Services Director Paula Dennison will provide the report. Good evening, Paula Dennison with Development Services. What you have in your packet is a request for private use of the public right-of-way for a certain area through town. The property in question is at the intersection of Husband Street and 12th Avenue. The request is actually to put a four-foot tall chain-link fence behind the sidewalk by about 12 inches. And this picture can give you a better idea. This is the property in question. 
and this is 12th Avenue. The sidewalk exists and the request again to put that four foot tall chain link fence as a um, multi-purpose barrier and the property owner is here this evening. If you have any questions of him, Mr. Pat Rogers is here. The property came before the Board of Adjustment and they were granted a variance to the setback requirements on 12th Avenue to put the actual structure um, within a few feet of the property line. So the property line itself is running in close proximity of where these plantings are located and the fence would be um, in between the sidewalk and those plantings. The request was reviewed by multiple city departments. Just looking at any issues or concerns, there were concerns identified, but we believe that those concerns can be addressed in the right-of-way agreement itself, such as if the city has a project along 12th Avenue and the fence is in the way, then Mr. Rogers will be notified of a certain amount of time to remove the fence. If it's not removed, especially under emergency conditions, the city would go out there and remove the fence in order to complete any city project that goes within this right of way. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, this is uh, an allowed um, consideration by the city council for that private use of the public way. And that's why it comes before you in the form of a right of way agreement. Thank you, <coughs> councilors. Questions or discussion? I had a question about materials. Um, I understand it's going to be chain link, and I know that uh, west of that property there is a home that has a chain link fence all the way around, but south of that property and west, there there's actually a more a kind of attractive white short picket fence, um, and any consideration uh, for materials in this discussion? Um, that would be a question for Mr. Rogers. Um, that's not uh, an aesthetic component that staff can can put forth as a requirement um, or um, a condition of this right-of-way. Of course, the council can, and that's one of the reasons that the right-of-way agreement is not in your packets this evening because the conditions that had already been identified by staff there was a possibility of having more conditions come out of a conversation with the property owner. Okay. Anything else for me? I think we're okay right now. Okay. Any other discussion? Would you like to well, speak I, with certainly. the applicant? Good evening, my name is Pat Rogers. I am the property owner of Husband House. Uh, you ask about materials. Mm -hmm. um, I was in discussion with uh, some of the, the folks in the building. They were worried a little bit about visibility and they wanted to keep some visibility there. But I like white picket, so if it could go either way. Um, well, I, I just think, you know, 12th Street is a major street. You've yes. got a nice looking building mm -hmm. and uh, chain link is just kind of like, I don't know. Um, not as aesthetically pleasing. No, as, it's not. It's just and, not. And if it meets the, the requirements for the visibility, they, there needs to be a certain distance they can see down 12th Street. Mm -hmm. And if it meets that, uh, maybe I can discuss that with Paula and her team and we can come up with an answer for you. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the visibility would be a concern coming off of Hesbun turning onto 12th because if there is a solid fence there, it would be really difficult to see down 12th. Yeah. So, but if it's short? If it, it can't be taller than four feet, right? I, yeah, but I if can you're get in a shorter car, than four, three. Four feet, I can go to three. I mean, I'm just looking for the, 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 the kids. Your get, rationale was really mm -hmm. clear, and it, it okay. makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it, I just, you know, in the neighborhood there mm -hmm. is, is a short one, and it's not, uh, there's space between the boards so okay. um, if you could check that out I it, would appreciate that if it might be possible to, to suggest both of them and if we can get that worked out I would be happy to invest in the picket fence so you don't mind if it would be plastic so I don't have to paint it every five years do you no I think the one uh, west of you and, and south is uh, okay. plastic but it looks very nice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that we put that in the agreement <laughs> <coughs> we can be 
I think we can make it part of the agreement, yes. Thank you okay. so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Ms. Dennison. Yes, thank you. I will just wait, make one other comment about picket fences. Some Occasionally they have quite sharp points at the top, and with this being only 12 inches from the back of the sidewalk, bicyclists, um, pedestrians, there's the possibility of injury, and that is just a concern. I'm sure we can work through those concerns with Mr. Rogers because he certainly would not want anyone getting hurt either. Uh, staff does recommend, you have an, a few alternatives in your report, but staff does recommend approval of the right-of-way agreement with the conditions listed in the report, and then we can add in this additional condition on the, the materials of the fence um, and um, direct staff to prepare the agreement for signatures. Anything else from me while I'm here? Uh, I'll move to accept staff, re staff recommendation with the modification around materials. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve staff's recommendation with modifications. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, uh, staff's recommendation is approved on CC-17-156. That brings us to consider approval of professional services agreement amendment and budget amendment for the North Perkins Road Improvements Project from McElroy to Lakeview, CC-17-157. Mr. McNichol. Uh, Monty Karn, direct Carnes, <laughs> Director of Transportation and Stormwater Services. We'll provide that report. Good evening. Uh, Monty Carnes, Transportation Services. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we've the city has previously approved design work to begin on uh, Perkins Road from uh, basically um, just south of McElroy to Airport Road uh, to widen that section road to five lanes. Um, that work is proceeding along nicely. Uh, the right-of-way plans are essentially complete. Um, we do have a review meeting scheduled to go over some comments we have, uh, but the next phase of that would be to prepare uh, documents for additional right-of-way that uh, might be needed. Um, this right away, some of it will be permanent, some of it will be utility easements, and some of it will be temporary construction easements. At the present time, there's about 50 parcels. Um, none of them are excessive in size. Um, and uh, Olson has uh, proposed to prepare those documents at a cost of $350 um, per document and roughly 50 documents. Uh, because it is still kind of fluid we think we're close but we're not exactly sure uh, we're asking for an uh, additional contingency so if we have to go to uh, 51 or 53 or 55 or some number um, we don't have to come back to you and ask for additional money um, so that's that's the gist um, we're asking for 21 additional $21,000 uh, of which 3,500 of that is a contingency, and then uh, the funds will come from the half cent uh, sales tax fund and to be transferred um, to that account, and uh, that would be the budget amendment. Be happy to answer any questions. Counselors. Make one other comment. Uh, Keystone Engineering uh, from Stillwater um, is the, um, also retain them to do the survey work. And so it's nice to know that a local firm will be doing this work. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Have we heard anything about the status of this project from ODOT, given their... It's, it's currently in the 2021, uh, fiscal year 2021, uh, uh, eight-year program. So that, it's scheduled. I think it slipped a year. Okay, but it's still on the eight-year plan. It's still, given it's still on the eight-year plan, yes. It's still a priority with them. And what we're doing now won't be interrupted or redone with what they do later. Is That's correct. Okay. Counselors, is, uh, if there's no more discussion, is there a motion on this recommendation? Motion uh, to approve the professional services agreement amendment and budget amendment. Okay, thank you. Monty, just, Monty, just in the event people out in the audience are thinking, no oh boy, they're gonna do something about Lakeview and, or excuse me, um, 
<coughs> Perkins, uh, Lakeview to McElroy. Um, that project is scheduled now for... So the entire project, let's just talk about the whole, whole project for a second. Um, from just south of McElroy to, to uh, Lakeview will be widened and there'll be a fifth lane, be turn lane, be uh, areas there'll be islands to protect it. Um, from the recently constructed 6th and Perkins intersection up to basically Hall of Fame, that the existing surface will be milled and overlaid and have a new, new surface. From um, just north of Lakeview to Airport Road, all of that will be milled and resurfaced asphalt. Uh, McElroy gets rebuilt and has double left turn lanes. Uh, very little work's being done at Lakeview in this project. And all of that then would be scheduled for the fiscal year of 2021. <coughs> and we would anticipate it would probably be that summer. So uh, roughly four years from now, we, we hope to be under construction. I just didn't want people holding their breath thinking it was going to be soon. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will second Councillor Dollington's motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second on CC-17-157. Please vote. And with a vote of 4 to 0, CC-17-157 is approved. It brings us to resolutions. Resolution number CC-2017-19. A resolution notifying the public of the compiling and publishing of the code, supp code supplement number five to the code of the city of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Mr. Dorman, anything you need to explain to us on that? This is our annual uh, updating of the code. So the code is current now uh, through, I believe, July of this year. So uh, we'll, compile, we'll collect them till next year and go through this process again. Okay. Discussion, counselors? Recommendation. <coughs> motion to adopt. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution CC-2017-19. Please vote. And with a vote of 4 to 0, 2017-19 is approved. That brings us to ordinances. <coughs> Ms. On first reading, Mr. Dorman. Ordinance number 3388, an ordinance rezoning attractive land located at 1503 South Perkins Road from RSS Residential Small Lot Single Family District to CG General Commercial General District. Counselors, discussion? Motion. Motion to, Mo motion to advance the second reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance ordinance 3388 to second reading. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, motion, uh, ordinance number 3388 is approved, <clears throat> is advanced. Excuse me. That brings us to ordinance number 3389, Mr. Dorman. An ordinance rezoning tracts of land addressed as 402 and 504 South McFarland Street, 2011 and 2021 West 4th Avenue, 2002 to 2015 West 5th Avenue, 401 to 523 South Willis Street, and 2006 and 2012 West 6th Avenue from RSS Residential Small Lot Single Family District within the Westwood Conservation Neighborhood Overlay to P Public District. Counselor's discussion. Motion to advance. Second. We have a motion and a second to advance ordinance 3389 to second reading. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the uh, ordinance is advanced. Ordinance number 3389 to second reading. <clears throat> that brings us to reports from officers and boards. City Attorney, Mr. Dorman. Two items tonight. Request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307C10 for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development, including the transfer of property financing or the creation of a proposal to entice a business to locate within the city of Stillwater because public disclosure of the matter to be discussed would interfere with the development of products and services and would violate the confidentiality of the business. Uh, secondly, request an executive session pursuant to 25 OS subsection 307B4 
for the purpose of confidential communication regarding pending litigation, Salisbury Industries, Inc. versus Stillwater Utilities Authority, case number CIV 170037HE, uh, United States District Court for the Western District of Oklahoma. It is my opinion that public disclosure of this matter will seriously impair the ability of the City Council to defend this pending litigation in the public interest. Thank you. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I have two quick items. One, I'd like to inform the Stillwater community about energy advocate companies inviting residents to purchase green energy certificates and promising to save you money. These third party companies state they can ensure 100% of the electric usage is covered by clean wind energy by setting up an online account. However, this is simply not true. Absolutely no one has access to the city of Stillwater's electric system but us. If you are a city of Stillwater electric customer with questions or concerns about your service, please contact utility customer service. I would also point out since we're a customer of GRDA that they produce about 20% green power as it is. They have both solar and wind and uh, hydroelectric that is green and uh, the city of Stillwater is actually looking into some of those same community assets. Thank you, Mr. McNichol. Uh, <clears throat> item two, Mayor. Oh, yes. Stillwater Fire Department is conducting free car seat inspections at Stillwater Fire Department Headquarters on Tuesday, November 28th from 10 a.m. to noon. Stillwater firefighters will examine the car seats for proper installation and usage. We would like to thank our partners in this event, Safe Kids Tulsa Area, Children's Hospital at St. Francis, and the Oklahoma Highway Safety Office. One of the things that we would like to remind people is that these car seats for children, uh, a lot of them have been recalled. A lot of them are improperly stall installed. And for the four or five minutes it would take to run by and uh, get your car seat looked at by the experts uh, might save both you and your child a lot of grief in the future. So if you can help us publicize that uh, through your social media or through work, uh, just telling people, especially people with small children, uh, to help us publicize this, and this is on our website as well, we would appreciate it. Counselors. Any news? I have an announcement. Uh, several months ago, we uh, appointed a, a citizen task force for Block 34. And they've been working diligently, but they are and they are now holding a town hall meeting this Wednesday, um, Wednesday the 8th, to receive public input on the development of Block 34. The task force members will meet with all interested residents from 5:30 to 7 p.m. at the Stillwater Community Center dining hall. Give us the date one more time. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, November 8th. Very important for citizen input. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, other news? Uh, I would like to uh, help encourage the community to, to ring in the holiday season at this year's Stillwater Christmas Parade of Lights taking place Thursday, December 7th. Groups interested in participating can view a detailed list of participation rules and download the application at the city's website. Parade entry applications are due by Wednesday, November 29th at 4.30 p.m. and late applications will not be accepted. Uh, and finally, I would like to thank the Stillwater Fire Department for their professionalism and quick response to the Phi Kappa Tau fraternity fire. Uh, the fire occurred at approximately 3.50 a.m. on Thursday, October 26th. Uh, and it was extinguished by the sprinkler system. Uh, approximately 40 members of the Phi Kappa Tau fraternity were displaced uh, in, uh, in this fire, and arrangements were made with Oklahoma State University and the Red Cross to provide uh, assistance to displaced students. So well done to the, a lot of fire department uh, accolades tonight, and rightfully so. Absolutely, and rightly so, yes. Okay. If nothing else on the news, that brings us to appointments. <clears throat> there are two vacancies on the Board of Adjustment. Both are unexpired terms, and one is going to end in 2020 and the other in 2019. Applications are on file from Richard Buchanan and Craig Spencer and were attached in the packet so everybody could see. And so I nominate, we, we do these votes separately. Do them together if you want. Doing together, okay. <clears throat> and for the Planning Commission, 
the term of my Bukert expired in July, and he has expressed his willingness to continue to serve on the Planning Commission. There is one vacancy for a term that also expired in July. Applications are on file from Cindy Braun, William Atkinson, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Mr. Wilkins, <clears throat> Michael Oliver, Vicki Jerome, Saxon Sampley, and they were attached as well. Oh, you, that's what you meant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought that was odd. Well, you were getting there. We would have. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go back to uh, item A, the Board of Adjustment. I nominate Richard Buchanan and Craig Spencer, counselors. For which term? Which, which on which term? <clears throat> is there? I don't think. Okay, so I'll just go Richard Buchanan is listed first. He will be the one on 2020 and Craig Spencer 2019. Unless Second. Unless you want to do it differently. Nope. Second. Yeah. yeah. We have a motion and a second for Richard Buchanan and Craig Spencer. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, Mr. Buchanan and Mr. Spencer are now part of the Board of Adjustments for two unexpired terms. <clears throat> okay, because I've already read the Planning Commission, I <clears throat> there, there are essentially two positions. I nominate... Uh, Mr. Buchert, and I nominate Cindy Braun. Any? Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to uh, reappoint Mr. Buchert and to appoint Cindy Braun. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, Mr. Buchert and, Ms. and Ms. Braun are, uh, one is continuing on the Planning Commission and one will be a new member. Mr. Dorman, did I hit all those right? You got okay. it. Okay, all right. At this time, I'm going to recess the City Council meeting and go to the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting. I call the SUA order meeting order. And trustees, does anyone wish to remove an item or is there a motion to approve the consent docket? Motion to approve. Second. Consent docket. Motion and a second to approve the consent docket for the SUA, please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the consent docket is approved. Mayor. Yes. May I point out an Absolutely. item on? Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to point out the Tower Park issue. Um, we have entered into preliminary stages of a public-private partnership with a developer in that area. And some months ago, there was discussion about the water pressure at Tower Park. And should this come to fruition, and there's every reason to believe that it will, uh, that will uh, provide 40 pounds for every home, 40 pounds of pressure or more for every home in that development. So, Which uh, is the required? Which is the required pressure, yes, by, by code, yes. All right. And I want to thank the developer and the others involved for their patience in that matter. Absolutely. Okay, have we already voted on the consent docket? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So that brings us to reports from officers and boards, and I will ask General Counsel, Mr. Dorman. Nothing to report, ma'am. General Manager, Mr. McNichol. No items, ma'am. Trustees. No items. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the SUA for November 6th. Please vote. Motion. And with a vote of four to zero, we are adjourned. That brings us to the Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting. Call the meeting to order. Trustees, consent docket, approval or clarification? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the consent docket is approved. That brings us to resolutions. <clears throat> Resolution, uh, Mr. Dorman, could you read this? Yes, ma'am, I'll read it. <clears throat> Resolution number uh, SEDA 
uh, zero two resolution authorizing the issuance of a Stillwater Economic Development Authority revenue note in an aggregate amount not to exceed three million four hundred thousand dollars in sales tax apportionment obligations, waiving competitive bidding of the sale of the revenue note, approving and authorizing the chairman or vice chairman of the authority to approve, finalize, execute, modify, and or deliver the necessary or appropriate transactional documents regarding the note and authorizing disbursements of the proceeds from the sale of the notes for the payment of project costs in connection with increment district number one city of stillwater in accordance with the authorizations and development agreement approved by the authority uh, very quickly this is the uh, issuance of the actual note that will repay the uh, uh, <coughs> agreement that you have with the, the uh, development on North Perkins Road, which consists of the Academy, the Walmart, uh, Wendy's, and the dental office. Uh, we finally worked through all of the logistics of issuance of the notes, and so uh, based on the development agreement and the authorizations under the project plan, uh, the last step is to get this uh, authorization from CETA. At that point, we'll start the process of executing the necessary documents and obviously call you up for a rather lengthy signing <laughs> uh, session, but uh, this will finish that up, and so this will get the uh, developer paid. Okay. Any questions, trustees? No. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve CETA-17-08. Please, uh, wait a minute, is that the right number? It's 2017-02. Motion. Sorry. That was in report number. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution A. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, zero resolution A is approved. 2017 02. <clears throat> that brings us to reports from officers, officers and boards. Mr. Dorman, General Counsel. Nothing to report, ma'am. General Manager. No items, ma'am. Trustees. No, thank you. No, ma'am. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the Stillwater Economic Development Authority meeting. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, we are now adjourned. And that brings, we will now reconvene the Stillwater City Council. Do we have a motion and a second to move to executive session? Motion to move to executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second to move to executive session. Please vote. And with a vote of four to zero, we are now moving to executive session. <laughs>